let's get into the news. The first story of the day is about Android Q. Now, right now, Android Pie is out. That's the latest version of Android. So Android Q will be the absolute newest version come later in 2019. And it brings with it uh, system-wide dark mode, but we also found some information, at least 9to5, Google found some information that's kind of bad and it gives complete control to the carrier. And it's going to do two things. One of them is going to be, it's going to give the carrier control over which networks they'll allow their phones to work on. So if you buy like, uh, for instance, a Galaxy uh, Note 9 from AT&T, they might not let it work on any other carriers, only on AT&T, or maybe they do let it work on certain carriers. That's one thing that Android Q is going to bring to it. So if you want to bring it even to a, a prepaid carrier, again, it might not work. The other bad news is that if you have dual SIMs in your phone, and it looks like this could be for a carrier phone or unlocked phone, the carrier will have complete control to lock out the second SIM slot, even if the, uh, so when you put, maybe put AT&T or a Verizon SIM in your dual SIM card phone, they'll block out that other one so it only works on certain carriers, whereas before you could use any carrier you want. Android Q, the update, is going to allow the carrier, again, way more control. Now, hopefully the carriers don't go crazy over this. Hopefully they don't do anything with it. But just to give you guys a heads up, this is what we might be looking at in terms of Android Q once it arrives later this year for a lot of phones. Next up, if you have the Samsung Gear S3 watch, they put out a huge update. And that update includes, as you can see right here, Samsung Health support, various indoor workouts, and back-to-back -back workouts, Samsung Health widget. Also brings two advanced modes, theater and sleep. Um, you have quick panel, so you can access your quick settings easier and faster. Messages, you can draft messages now, can be saved. Uh, you've got music, user can change to different music play source and watch instead of using a phone. Uh, settings menu improved categorization of menus and then call. Users can now navigate to the other call and other features and apps while on a call. So huge update right now. If you have this watch, make sure you go in and check for the update. And the last story of the day is about the prices for the Galaxy S10 and S10 5G. And you're probably going to say, you talked about that last week, Greg. What are you doing now? Well... We have an update on it with some further information on the pricing, and I think it's gonna make people a little bit happier. And when I say a little, I mean just a little tiny bit. First off, let's talk about the S10 Lite. Now this phone is going to have a price of $880 American. All these prices I talk about would be American. So $880, six gigabytes of RAM, and 128 gigabytes of storage. The screen will be 5.8 inch, it'll be flat, It'll have an Infinity O displays, meaning it's gonna have that little dot uh, in the top right, and it'll have dual rear cameras and a single side mounted fingerprint sensor. So the fingerprint sensor will not be on the screen, it'll be on the side of the phone. Next up, we have the 6.1 inch Galaxy S10. This is the middle of the road one. It's gonna come in two configurations. It's gonna come in six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage, and the price on that is gonna be $1,050. For the eight gigabyte RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage one, you're looking at a price of $1,340. And that's gonna come with a 6.1 inch curved Affinity O display, triple camera system on the back, an in-display fingerprint sensor. So again, that fingerprint will be underneath the display. Next up is the Galaxy S10 Plus, which is gonna be the 6.4 inch version. Uh, that's gonna come in a few configurations here. It's gonna be six gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage, and the price on that is going to be $1,200. As for the eight gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage version, you're looking at 1480. And then don't forget, the price isn't showing here, but there's supposed to be a 12 gigabyte of RAM, one terabyte of storage one, and I would assume that price is gonna be very high. I would assume it's probably gonna be in the $1,800 range. It doesn't say it right here, uh, but I would have to assume it's going to be. And then lastly, you're looking at the 5G version, also known as the Galaxy S10X, which will have a 6.7 inch display and should come in at $1,800. And it'll also feature a quad uh, camera system on the back and then after that, all the variants will have the same processor 
underneath the hood have it be the 9820 Exynos or the Snapdragon 855. First story of the day is about a trademark that Samsung has filed called Neuro Game Booster, and this is what it says. Software for smartphones, computer application software featuring games and gaming, artificial intelligence software. Now in layman terms, what is it going to do? It's going to improve gaming or games with artificial intelligence. Maybe you'll get better frame rates, better performance out of the game based off, you know, and Samsung using their artificial intelligence to do that with. Now this hopefully will come out with the Galaxy S10, which I wouldn't really be that surprised um, knowing that the Galaxy S10 is coming out next month. This already got trademarked. We could probably and most likely will see this in the Galaxy S10. If not, then definitely definitely by the Note 10 for sure, because that's months away from even that time. So hopefully, again, this gives us even better gaming performance, where gaming is already pretty fantastic, but it could, could it always get better with better games? Yes, it could, and this could be the tool that does it for everybody. And the last story of the day is about the Galaxy S10 and the cameras inside. Lee Jae Young, who is the heir apparent to the Samsung empire, his father basically runs Samsung, right now has been wanting to improve the cameras for the Galaxy line of phones for a bit now. And it looks like they're doing that in the S10 right off the bat. So I guess he went in and he's been talking to employees and just taking feedback from customers overall about uh, photos being oversaturated, uh, photos being over sharpened. And it looks like they're going to improve all of that in the Galaxy S10. We'll have to wait and see what it actually looks like if it is that improved. I, the only issue, honestly, I really have with Samsung phones is if there's any type of motion and, and you guys can come up with any fix you want, just it's, nothing seems to work for me, it gets blurry. And whereas I can use a pixel and it, the person can move ever so slightly, even if it's like this, and it'll capture it clear, not fuzzy, not blurry. I, that's the only thing I want fixed on my Samsung phones. If I had that, I would be perfectly fine with everything else. But Exciting times, Galaxy S10, February 20th announcement. Again, I will be there. I already have my plane ticket, I already have my hotel, and uh, I will definitely be covering it with a video and my first impressions. So let's get into the news. The first story of the day is about the Galaxy Note 9, which I have in my hand right here, and it won something from DxO Mark, which was actually very surprising considering its competition. And as you can see right here, Galaxy Note 9's front camera listed on the top position of DxO Mark's selfie scoreboard. Now the total score was 92. That's a 96 score in photo and 86 in video. And some of the pros for the photos are accurate exposures on faces, pleasant skin tone, well-controlled noise, accurate and uh, repeatable autofocus, good subject isolation in bokeh mode. And then in photo cons, you're getting low contrast and tone compression with HDR yellow green color cast outdoors, low levels of detail and low light. As for video pros, you're getting accurate exposure on faces, pleasant skin tone and color rendering, good detail preservation in the foreground, well controlled noise. And then some of the cons are unnecessary refocusing, residual high frequency motion in static handheld scenes, exposure instabilities and steps in convergence and high level of ringing. Now this is very surprising considering its competition. It beat the Pixel 3, it beat the iPhone, the Huawei phones, basically every other phone on the market. Pretty crazy because I actually don't consider it one of the best selfie cameras. It is a good one, but I think the Pixel is a better one, but uh, with photos anyway, maybe not with video, but regardless, congrats Samsung on the big win. And the last story of the day is awesome. It's an amazing looking device and it comes from Xiaomi and it is a video of their president of the company playing with a foldable phone. And here we are. This is Lin Bin. I love the name playing with their new foldable phone and it looks exactly like a tablet slightly curved even when it's straightened out regardless. But anyways, it's the the new again, their new foldable phone. They don't have a name for it. Um, so they are looking for a name, but it looks really, really cool. Um, even in tablet mode, I'd be interested in playing with it. And then as you can see, he folds it both sides and it turns into a phone. I want this thing definitely. And it just makes me more excited for the Samsung device because it's futuristic. This is something that can fit in your pocket and then you can expand it out and it turns into a tablet. And it just, I want this thing. Do you guys want it or what? 
Tell me that thing is not badass. That thing looks amazing. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of that Xiaomi phone tablet mixture thing. Let me know. It looks, I think it looks so cool, so futuristic. First story of the day is about the Galaxy Note 8 and the Galaxy S8 line of phones. Now, when you get that Android Pie update officially, you will be getting Dolby Atmos as well in the software so you get better sound. Now, you have to have stereo speakers in order to use it through the regular speakers, which those two phones do not. They have single firing speakers, but you'll still be able to have Dolby Atmos through a wired headset and also through a Bluetooth headset. Now, what Dolby Atmos does is just increases the bass and the better, the loudness and just overall better sound of your device. So it's a really cool thing. I have it turned on and uh, on my, I've had it turned on since my Galaxy S9 Plus and now I also have it on my Note 9. It is a really, really cool feature. So once you get this update, make sure you activate it on your phone. Next up, the Galaxy S10 is gonna come with a very interesting software feature. It's gonna come with a cryptocurrency wallet, meaning that it's going to have the ability to store your cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, ERC20, Bitcoin Cash, and then others most likely as well. And we get we know that because it was on a screenshot of a Galaxy S10 running. It says, welcome to Samsung Blockchain Key Store. Key Store is a secure and convenient place for your cryptocurrency. So kind of an interesting thing to have, but also kind of cool. Um, it, Samsung already has tons of software features built into it. Why not a cryptocurrency wallet? When the Galaxy S10 Plus does arrive, it has gonna have two cameras. One of those cameras on the front should be an ultra wide camera and we kind of know what it's going to look like and it's pretty insane. Check this out. This is from the Galaxy M line of phones and it's a little teaser from an Indian actress and she shows off you know, what it looks like with the front camera and then she switches to the ultra wide selfie camera and it's pretty damn amazing. I'm very excited to try this out. What about you guys? Ice Universe put out a tweet as you can see right here. It says Galaxy S10 Plus, 4100 milliamp and 7.8 millimeters uh, thick. We've already known about the thickness, but the battery, that's a slight update from what we heard before. 4100 milliamps is slightly higher. It's 100 more milliamps than the Galaxy Note 9. So you're getting a little tiny bit more battery in a smaller surface of a phone. So that's always better and always really, really cool. Uh, so hopefully we'll get amazing battery life uh, paired with the Snapdragon 855 processor and Exynos 9820, depending upon where you live. And then lastly, when the Samsung foldable phone does arrive, uh, we've got some information on 5G variant and also the colors of it. Let's talk about the 5G variant. Um, it's definitely going to be in South Korea, the 5G variant of that phone. I would also suppose it's going to be in America and maybe some other places as well. But the, the, the story from today is that it will definitely be out in South Korea. The other part of it is the colors of this foldable phone. And the colors for this, and they could get renamed, but the colors overall are gonna be blue, green, silver, and black. Might have to go green if I end up getting the foldable phone, but that's a lot of money in a short period of time. Thinking about Galaxy S10, foldable phone, uh, Note 10 slightly after that, so pretty crazy amount of spending money that people could possibly spend on Samsung phones in the upcoming year. First story of the day is about Instagram. Now, if you use Instagram and use their little stories thing in the top left, and you can post these little stories that last for about 24 hours, they added a new feature, and it's probably gonna impress some people, but basically, you used to be able to add filters to you know new videos and photos that you did in terms of adding maybe some sunglasses or something like that, where you can now do that on old photos as well, old photos and videos. So if you wanna be able to do that, all you're gonna do is load up Instagram, uh, hit the top left where you can do like your Insta stories and then hit the smiley face, which is just to the right of the close button on that screen and then you're able to choose a photo and then you can add a filter to it in terms of, you know, like I said, sunglasses or smiley face, whatever you're trying to do with it. So pretty cool if you're in Instagram, it's available or should be available right now. Next up, Mark Zuckerberg, who owns the Facebook empire, will converge the messaging platforms for WhatsApp, Instagram, and Facebook, so that if you wanna message people on those different platforms, you now will be able to, at the end of 2019 or as late as 
early 2020, meaning you could go on the Instagram messaging part and message someone that's, uh, that's on Facebook Messenger or on WhatsApp and vice versa. You don't have to own all three apps. Um, you could ju- you'll just be able to message them. I think that's fantastic um, to unify all those messaging platforms so that you can message someone because most people have at least one of those messaging platforms at this point. WhatsApp is huge, Facebook Messenger is huge, and then a lot of people have Instagram as well. So again, you're bound to be able to talk to the person you're looking for on at least one of those. So awesome news, and it's coming up very, very soon, or at least about a year away, not too bad. And the last story of the day is about the Galaxy S8, S8 Plus, and Note 8. Here in America, the One UI beta is available now. Now, it might not be available on your carrier, so if it's not, you know, don't get too upset, but you can at least check. So what you need to do is download the Samsung Plus app, And then once you're in there, click on notices, and then you should be able to enroll, and then you'll be prompted to for a download uh, software update, or you can at least check new software updates after you enroll. And you can see right here, the update is 1.5 gigabytes, and you'll get the One UI beta software. And I've heard, because I don't have one of these phones, that it has the version, I guess version seven update, which does not have the battery drain bug in there. So that's awesome. And I've had it on my Galaxy Note 9 for over a month now, and it runs really, really well. Of course, there's some issues, but overall it runs pretty damn well. And they push out updates every two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, something like that. So you push them out fairly quick. So if you wanna get that, download it now. And again, it might not be available based on the carrier on, so just be aware about that. First story of the day is Samsung is coming out with updates to their Galaxy Buds. That's what they're gonna be called. They were used to be called Icon X. Uh, buds and now they're going to be called Galaxy Buds. It looks like they're moving everything to that Galaxy brand name and the Galaxy Buds are going to be earphones that fit right in your ear. We don't know what they look like but spec wise what they're going to have is uh, 8 gigabytes of internal storage, Bluetooth 5.0 and then beyond that the colors are going to be black, white and yellow and we pretty much don't know anything else about it so I don't know if they're going to have you know, whatever they're gonna have, that's all we really know. As for release date, you're probably looking at Samsung Unpack 2019 because they did pass through Bluetooth certification and that usually means they're very, very close to release. They might come out earlier than that, but let's just stick with Unpacked 2019, which is February 20th. Also that has passed through Bluetooth certification is the Galaxy Fit. There are two versions, one's called like Galaxy Fit, the other one's called Galaxy Fit E. Not sure what the E means, it could mean eSIM, meaning you could use these as a, uh, you know, like a, a mobile watch with a SIM card. And this is gonna be their fitness watches and they'll both be Bluetooth 5.0. And for the colors, you're looking at black, silver, white, and yellow, so you know, wide diverse colors, same as you get with those uh, Galaxy Buds. But again, beyond that, we don't really know much more about these. Now again, February 20th is probably looking like the release date for these since they both pass through uh, Bluetooth certification price. We don't really know any extra features. We really don't know, but if you're interested in this stuff, again, fitness, think fitness, and think you know, tiny earbuds to compete again with Apple AirPods, which seem to be the king right now. And the last story of the day is from a Reddit post that I found because I'm interested in the Google Cam. And they have the Google Cam for almost every device right now and you can install it by sideloading it. And it's not opening right now. But anyways, you can get all the classic Pixel features without the Pixel phones. If you love that Pixel camera, you can make your your photos look pretty much like Pixel photos. Why would you want that? Because Pixel photos look really, really nice. And this post breaks it down completely on installing it and the settings that you set up. So let's just take a quick look. So I will link this post down below. So if you want to install this and set it up, just follow it. It's really easy to follow. Um, It's pretty in depth and it basically makes your photos look awesome and very pixel-esque in terms of like, you know, Pixel 3 and Pixel 3 XL photos. Uh, yeah, so all the links are here, to the, the apps to download, all the settings are here as well. So just follow it and you're gonna love it. I am 
currently in Phoenix, Arizona, and it is, I'm here because of a wrestling event. Basically, they have a weekend and a couple days of wrestling starting the, the, the this weekend and then the beginning of the week. I won't be here for Monday Night Raw or Tuesday Night SmackDown, but I did attend, on Saturday, I attended uh, their NXT live event, which was really, really fun. And then today, when this video is released, I'll be attending Royal Rumble, my first ever Royal Rumble match that I've ever attended, and I'm excited for it for sure. They're having it over the baseball stadium, and... Uh, We'll see if they open it up or they keep it as a dome so they can do it either way there. But anyways, let's get into the news. And I only have one story of the day, but it's a pretty important big story. And it's about Samsung moving from plastics to actually using sustainable materials. Now, they put out this press release saying the following. Samsung Electronics announced today that the company will start taking steps this year to replace plastic packaging materials with paper and other environmentally sustainable elements. From the first half of 2019, the packaging used currently for Samsung products and accessories ranging from mobile phones and tablets to home appliances will be substituted with environmentally sustainable materials like recycled bio-based plastics and paper. Now, what that means, obviously, is that's the Galaxy S10. So when the S10 comes out, because I know it's a lot of you guys come to my channel, I know that's what I'm most interested about, is that when the Galaxy S10, S10 line of phones is released, it's gonna have sustainably recyclable plastics that are included inside of the box. The other huge thing from Samsung about this is that they are going to be switching their uh, glossy chargers to matte finish chargers. So, you know, the regular glossy chargers you've got in the past with Samsung tablets and phones, that's now going to be replaced with a matte one. I guess it's easier to recycle. It's easier for it to break down, I would assume as well, because it doesn't have some kind of special coating that makes it glossy. So again, matte chargers are coming with the phones. They're also doing a bunch of other things like I said with home appliances and basically by 2020 they're going to be saving a lot of plastics that were inside of their uh, you know home appliances and phones and TVs and everything else that they make and it's now going to be again bio safe plastics and papers and things that break down and things that have been recycled. And it's a good thing. Samsung's competing against Apple. Apple already does a lot of this stuff. So it's a good PR move. You know, if, if Samsung comes out and says, we now use uh, safe plastics and papers. So there you guys go. Pretty cool stuff. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, especially about that matte charger. Is it something you're looking forward to or is it something you are looking down upon? Let me know your thoughts and ideas about what Samsung is doing Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you down the road. Peace!